This is the first video ever of Rachel Gillette that anyone has ever seen. And as you mentioned, these neighbors are shedding a lot of new light on this case. We just want to ask you a few basic questions. Just a few questions that Rachel is not willing to answer. Tonight, only seven Action News cameras were rolling as she returned home. And as we tried to get the conversation going, Rachel closed the garage door on us. Rachel was Bob Beshera's mistress, and just last week she filed this personal protection order against Bob. In it, she says he's stalking her. I heard a lot of noise by the door. That's Rachel's neighbor who did not want us to show her face. This neighbor has never spoken out before. She was cited in Rachel's personal protection order last week as having seen Bob trying to break in to Rachel's flat. I heard a lot of noise by the door, by the, by the side door, and I was fearful that somebody had seen the house on television. I heard the twisting of the key and the door being pushed in real hard, and I thought for sure somebody was breaking in, so I dialed the Gross Point police. Did you see the face of the person? <laughs> yes, I did. Who was it? It did look like Bob Bashera. While Rachel says she fears for her life in this PPO, her neighbors just want this ordeal behind them. They want Rachel to speak with the press. She needs to come in front of the camera and meet with everyone. Bob remains a person of interest in Jane Beshera's murder. As for Rachel, she has not been accused of anything, but has lawyered up, concerned she may have to testify if there is a trial. And right now, there is only one person in custody in connection with Jane Beshera's murder. That's Bob Beshera's handyman, Joseph Gentz. Of course, we'll keep you posted on any new developments. She was a stewardess aboard one of Alfred Taubman's private planes, jetting around the world. Nicole Rock says it was a dream job that turned into a nightmare. It was very um, intimidating. Nicole says wheels up or down, Taubman was all over her. At times it got scary when he was alone. Also, um, in company of others that maybe he felt comfortable in front of. Really? That he could, uh, he felt... He could behave in a manner that was um, inappropriate. In the lawsuit filed in federal court, Rock's attorney details the graphic accusations. Among them, that 88-year-old Taubman forced his tongue into Rock's ear, kissed her, touched, and slapped her. And in one instance, Taubman allegedly pushed her onto his bed in the private jet and attempted to perform oral sex on her. I had to uh, seek counseling. I was very sick, very ill. Nicole says things got worse when she got pregnant and when she returned after having the baby. Our client uh, was pregnant during her employment. Uh, when Mr. Taubman found out about it, the allegations are that he became very uh, upset and there was an element of retaliation regarding the pregnancy. I took the maternity leave, went back to work and was still told after the baby was born that I had to, um, I should have gotten an abortion. I was unable to. Um, Enjoy my baby. So why did she stay for so long? Nicole says she had bills to pay and a newborn to support. Finally, she quit. I try not to think about this and put it in the back of my mind, but, you know, it's always there. I don't think it'll ever go away. Take a live look. The pastor is now speaking with police and telling them exactly what happened. We're at Linwood and Davison here on the city's west side, and this is what happened. As far as we know, the pastor had come here to this gas station, the Sitco. He was in an Infinity vehicle. He had come inside, possibly into the uh, convenience store at the gas station. He was then approached by a couple of men, we believe, maybe more than that. He was roughed up. They took his Infinity. As far as we know right now, it's still out there. We're actually just live talking about what happened here. Uh, if you could tell us, you, you'd come to this gas station to get some fuel? Yeah, just I uh, was on my way to Toledo. Oh my gosh, <laughs> to what happened? Someone. And came into the gas station, and when I walked in, there was just 10, at least 10 uh, young men in the station. And when I came out, uh, about four of them followed me out, and I watched, and you know, being aware of my surroundings, I pumped the gas, you know, backwards looking at them. And then when uh, the gas kind of spilled over, I looked down and then one of them came and hit me and then the other ones came out and just punched me. And yeah, you got to cut, you've got to cut right Yeah, and I think I'm going to go no. check my hand out and knees and whatnot. These are the pants that just ripped them off. Oh I was gosh. indecently exposed. It was quite savage, you know, and I just... You know, I'm from Detroit, I live in Detroit, I love Detroit, and I just didn't want to be, you know, 
when you walk in, you say, this is not a good situation.